So have you ever had a really exciting thing you wanted to do and you share it with someone that you value their opinion and they instantly shut it down by saying how it's not possible, how you can't do it unless you do it this way, or how it's not possible for you? Yeah, of course. (laughs) Welcome to the Gray Matters Podcast. I find that that's something that kind of puts people off from doing things they truly want to do because they let other people influence them, which is something I've learned is really just a projection of other people's past experiences and perspectives. Yeah, I would, I would definitely say that. And I also think that there's a strong correlation between maybe they tried it and it didn't work out for them or they didn't try it at all. So I know you said past experiences, but sometimes it's like lack of experience also. Like they wanted to do something, they wanted to go out on their own and do it and it just didn't work out. Yeah, it could definitely be... That's kind of what I meant, past experience. They either tried or they regret yeah. not trying, and they took the quote-unquote safe route. Because I know you had an experience like that recently. Yeah. I've had experiences like that since I developed a passion for something I wanted to do with my life. Or it's coming from a place of fear but also love, so the person thinks that they're protecting you from something, Like, oh, this isn't a societal norm. I'm emotionally or financially or whatever responsible for this person. I don't think that they should take that risk because I don't want to see them get hurt. Mm -hmm. So I would think that would relate to like a parent where they might not have fear or experience or they didn't try and do something, but they see their child taking a journey that they didn't anticipate for them and that I mean, it's still coming from a place of like fear and uncertainty, but it's like a different kind of fear and uncertainty. So it's interesting you said that because I haven't experienced that from my parents. My parents have always supported my decisions if they were not going to be harmful to me or other people. Your parents were way too nice to you. But other people I've come across, well, no, they're supportive. (laughs) They just wanted me to be happy. But I also worked hard, and they were very adamant about work ethic. But other people along the way have, I sensed, not from a place of love, but not from a place of hate or anger, but just a place of their own shit, have projected their fears and insecurities onto my desires And a clear example comes when I wanted to, or comes to mind, it was like 2015. I wanted to um, help people with my passion for nutrition. And I was told the only way to do that and make a living at doing that was to go to college. And now fast forward five years later, uh, I think I did the math and it's like two and a half times the amount of the average dietitian, you know, which was the field, like the, I guess the, the, um, like the nationwide average. Yeah. Oh no, in North Carolina. Okay. But It was like, that was like the destination that I could find close to what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I'm glad I didn't pick that because it would have taken me like eight years to get to that because I have no college education, but also would have been in some sort of debt to get there. But also I found out they're legally not allowed to talk about anything to do with state of ketosis. So that would have been devastating. And you ended up making more money this last year. I ended up making more money, yes. Than the state average for a registered dietitian in North Carolina. Yes. That's impressive. Yes. But where where I think a lot of people fall short to going after the things they want, whether it's a goal, a dream, a childhood dream especially, is based on these influences that are external. Yeah, I would say that. I I think... There's also the inner dialogue, of course, of like fear of failure, fear of judgment, you know, the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of that's external because, you know, when you're a child, your imagination... But people learn who's important to them. Some people care about what a lot of people think, right? But even myself, who didn't really care about what a lot of people thought, I had like a list of people in my head whose opinions mattered to me. And it's because they're people that I respected and the people that I looked up to. 
Um, but sometimes you even have to take that list and chuck it out the window if you feel something is really right and they're, they're saying otherwise, you know? And I've had that happen on multiple occasions and I've had to adapt my list and I've had to like put little disclaimers on my list. Like this list matters unless we're talking about a, B, or C. <laughs> Does that make sense? So no, there are definitely people sense, I would yeah. still go for advice and still go to for advice, but there are also people that understand that I'm not going to listen to everything that they say. They know that their advice will be taken and digested and utilized as I see appropriate in my current situation. Mm -hmm. um, when in the past, I've had mentors and people who I've asked for advice and they expect me to do exactly what they say. And that's really weird and that's controlling yeah. putting, putting people in a box. And it's, I don't think it's fair. Like when some, when your friend asks you for advice and you are like, okay, unsolicited advice, this is what I think you should do. You can't expect that person to do exactly what you think. That'd be kind of weird. That would be a weird relationship <laughs> if you think about it, but still people expect that of others. And I, I think that that's something worth mentioning. Yeah. And also back to what you said about having these lists of people that you value their opinions. I've also learned in the last couple of years, specifically around finances and direction I want to go with my life creatively, professionally, whatever. And if it pertains to finances, even the list of the top three people in the world that I value their opinion most, if they can't relate to what I'm trying to do because they haven't done it themselves... Yeah. then their opinions also have to be audited based on that. And I never really understood that and why I gravitated away from people that I respected that told me, yeah, I agree with that or no, you shouldn't do that. It's a bad idea. But I knew it was a good idea, like deep down, you know, mm -hmm. and I was just kind of insecure about that and wasn't trusting my gut. But, you know, uh, it was a, a, something Eric Thomas was talking about when he was referring to like, business and his mom and he, he's like you know he's like i couldn't go to my mom for advice on how to be a billion or a millionaire because she doesn't know what that's like you know she grew up you know uh, raised me as a blue collar worker you know yeah um and so along my route i've learned now reflecting after hearing that reflecting on the people that have supported me or didn't support me but where they came from in their career whether they supported me or not if they didn't have that experience of let's say making a hundred thousand dollars a year or more i had to kind of weigh out their opinion based on their experience and yeah. it's like teaching theory from a textbook versus teaching something from personal experience in life mm -hmm. in that instance i think it's helpful if you're communicating with someone that has say a really good intuition or who just like knows you personally really well because i you and I, for example, there have been instances in your career when I have said, I don't like this. I don't think it's a good idea. I think that other people need to look at this or whatever. And I'm instantly labeled as like a Debbie Downer. Like you're just like, hey, you are you're referring harshing to the publicist? my vibe. Yeah, the publicist. Let's just stick with that one. Certain <laughs> contracts that you may or may not have signed and are no longer working with um certain people that you are no longer working with like yeah i we get just, it you're right yeah i'm admitting it i like the people that i like and then i have i have good gut feelings and you you have to i'm not saying that i'm like the end all be all i know josh on a very personal level um intimately and <laughs> and on a friendship level and i happen to have a pretty solid intuition so i think that combination makes for a good sounding board and maybe like not necessarily listen to everything that i say but when i have that like gut feeling you're like maybe i'll take a step back from this and think about it a little bit closer i think it's important to find people like that in your life um like my mom, I love her because she's devil's advocate for everything. If I tell her I agree with something, she'll instantly start arguing the opposite opinion, even if she agrees with me. And I don't, I don't know why she does that, but it makes me think about other things. It makes me consider other things. And I know that if I'm listening to her talk and I like think, 
she's crazy. Like she doesn't know what it is. And then I know that I'm on the right path, you know? So even people like that, you have to find what works for you and find your circle and develop it because there are going to be people that will tell you you're crazy no matter what, just because it's something big or scary or a bigger jump than they would be comfortable with or than they're comfortable with you making, whether it's out of fear that you're going to be better than them or fear in the unknown or past experiences. It's just, it's important to find the right people. And it takes a long time to do that. It takes a really long time. I'm also glad I didn't listen to you in those experiences because I learned. (sighs) And if I, had I not, I wouldn't have learned and I would have made a mistake later on that maybe would have cost me more. I don't agree with that because if you would listen to me in those situations, you'd probably listen to me in other situations too. But you also don't know that. (laughs) No, I do not. That is very true. Um, but no, I, I don't think you should ever regret decisions that you made. I don't, I'm not saying like you, you should have listened to me. Sorry. That was our dog's head banging against the table. Um, but you know, it's nice to have people that you can trust to make sound decisions or have sound opinions about your decisions in your life. I think it's important to have an advisory board. Especially if you can weed out if somebody just completely disagrees, you got to dig deep and figure out if that's really what you want to do. You know, it's important for people to challenge you in your life. I also think that's why it's important to have what I refer to as virtual mentors, people that are not in your network that have done something similar to you want to do that goes against the norm because then you can kind of see the route they took and reverse engineer it and apply it to the things you want to do. Um, I think that's, that's been super beneficial to me on top of having people like you in my life to audit my decisions. If I'm too in my head to kind of look at it from a non-emotional standpoint, whether that's excitement or fear, but also just, you know, kind of look at it, um, kind of from a neutral perspective. Yeah. When I'm almost the, like the opposite end of the spectrum, because I have, issue with asking people advice about things. So I internalize it and internalize it and internalize it until it becomes something bigger than I feel that I can deal with. And that's when I start asking people. And that's not when you should be asking others because then you're overwhelmed, right? Then it is an emotional place, no matter Mm. what you want to do, whether you're excited or fearful or what it's like, if it's overwhelming, then you're in a point of high emotionality. Is that a word? And you're going to be more easily influenced either Emotional way. Emotional distress. Yeah, when you're in that place. So I think it's it's good to make a decision or when you're almost there, that's when you ask somebody, don't wait until it feels overwhelming or too much as far as situations go and then wait to ask somebody. I think that's been detrimental to me. Well, it's very important not to get to that point because we know when we get to that point and we're stressed, our IQ is what halved in like first seven minutes. So you're not going to be making good judgments regardless. And then we also know through the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza that information that's not the level of which you're experiencing is not going to make it to your brain consciously and sink in Mm -hmm. or subconsciously you know it's like the level of information coming in isn't matched to the level that you're at so even if you're super overwhelmed and someone's giving you straightforward logic advice but you're in a fearful state you're in a stressful state you're going to hear it you're going to dismiss it because it doesn't align with how you feel Mm -hmm. and then i think that's what's happened to me in the past because i was in like a weird like, let's take the publicist example of what, 2017? Yeah. I was in a weird, like, limbo, I'd say. Like, quarter-life crisis, identity crisis, leaving my career that I dreamed about to something different. I was stressing money. I was stressing what to do with the money I did have that was, you know, more money than I had previously. And I want to make yeah. sure I did these things. And they talked about this. And there was a good source that recommended them. And then you came in and you gave me very sound advice, but I recognized that you didn't have any experience in this. And and I just kind of weighed all that together. Then we actually got in an argument because of a comment I made to you when you said it. Mm -hmm. And because it was kind of blunt, which is how we both speak anyways, and just the emotional state I was in. So then therefore it led me to ignoring your advice, 
learning kind of the hard way, the expensive way, but it, the outcome of that, I think sank in with me on a more emotional level than where I was before that it made me so aware of things like that moving forward. Same thing with the contract. The contract wasn't bad. The contract brought me a lot of value to my life. The recent one we're talking about that Mm -hmm. ended um, this year, May of 2020, that brought a lot of so much things, like so many different awarenesses, belief structures, financial things, um, tangible things, like experiences. Like it was nothing but positive other than my expectation and what the contract was built off of words that I assumed were going to be factual. And so it was more yeah. of an emotional and moral letdown um, that because I had these expectations, values built around it. Right. But I think ultimately it's another valuable learning lesson that's solidified how I'm going to move forward and what I'm going to do to invest in making sure that my decisions are protected. Yeah. That means you. That means X, Y, and Z, you know, that means where I was going actually earlier. It was like trusting my intuition more. Yeah. That's something I've been through a lot of journaling, a lot of work with Kara is like, I do have pretty intuitive sense, but I tend to analyze it too much and then I lose it and then I like thrive or not thrive, but like I, I seek validation from other people. And then when it conflicts with my original thought, then I'm like, oh shit. I am a firm believer that if you have like a gut instinct that is just compelling you and it is not coming from a place of negativity or fear, you have to listen to it. You absolutely have to. And I am guilty in the same way of watering down or diluting my intuition because I overthink things. And so I have this very polarized personality where half the time I'm making super impulsive decisions. Like, yep, that's what I want to do. Like done, decided. And then the other part of me will take something very simple, like doing an assignment that my coach gave me (laughs) about journaling or doing a specific thing. And I am physically and mentally stuck because I can't Mm -hmm. wrap my head around it because I overthink it and I sit down and I try and do it and it doesn't work and I get frustrated and I walk away. So it's just, do you think that that's past like past shit, like past emotional baggage that's built to as a protection mechanism now that something so simple becomes so complex, but the way I'm learning is like, it's like hidden things that is protecting you from, like bringing it to the forefront and having to like recognize it, face it. Yeah, of course. And you know, even like my ex used to tell me all the time, like, you don't want to like, you don't do anything you don't want to do. And I never really saw that as a bad thing. I was like, yeah, no, I don't do anything I don't want to do because why live your life like that? But sometimes you have to do shit that you don't want to do because you're better for it at the end of the day because every person has weird subconscious beliefs and fears that are keeping them from doing things that are actually really good for them. Does that make sense? So it's like now I don't do anything I don't want to do unless I know it's really, really good for me. And then, and then I suck it up and do those things. But yeah. And Personal work is hard because when you start doing personal work, you start noticing flaws in the people that you used to look up to. And those people used to give you advice. And then when they try and give you advice now, you see the error in it and you see the issue in it. And then you kind of feel like you're a man without a country for a second. And that's, that's intimidating. Yeah. Well, I mean, like what you don't know, you don't know what you don't know. And once you know it, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Right. And so I I refer to that as like, well, yeah, once you look behind the curtains, like you can't like redo that and be like, oh no. once you see the arrow in the FedEx logo, like you can't (laughs) ever unsee the arrow after that. And I think that's a big part of personal growth and development is once you start having to face your own shit, observe it. And learn to give to take away the meaning 
Mm -hmm. and to take the experiences of the past without meaning, which is wisdom, and apply moving forward, you no longer judge other people. Not all the time. You will judge them, but Everybody more so people. you're observing what you're learning in other people and you're seeing the mirroring effect happen, the shadow yeah. effect happening. But you're also, yeah, you're judging, but it's not in like a negative context because you're just observing. And right. if you are judging, at least for me, now where I am now, if I do find myself judging from a negative context, um, I ask myself, why am I doing this? Take a step back. What about me is being reflected in that person or that experience that's making me judge that person or that experience? Yeah. And that's where I am now. And that's really, I've, I learned what was really difficult to get to this point was having to accept my flaws and what make up me. And the more I learn, the more I see it in other people, especially people closest to me. Right. Like you said, people you look up to. And then you start having these different perceptions of people because the more you learn, the more your brain thinks, and the more you put pieces of information together and you're like, oh, that's not really what I thought it was. Yeah. Which is a really interesting idea because you gain your own experience, you gain your own appreciation for things, you're doing self-work, you're growing, and then you start to notice that maybe your mentors don't live in a way that you would want to emulate, or you don't want your life to necessarily be just like that. You're noticing their flaws, you're noticing that the decisions that they're making are coming out from a place of lack or fear or um, even like negativity or judgment. And, and that gets hard. And I think a lot of people get to that point and then all of a sudden feel a sense of superiority. But me personally, I've noticed that people that have tried to give me advice in the past, they feel that same sense of superiority from their own experiences. So you really have to watch yourself and you really have to be careful because I know a lot of people that think that they're real woke, but they're just like, real douchey and that it's yeah. like it's a really you you have to be careful because it's super easy to fall into that step where you're just like yeah that person's like not doing the right personal growth or whatever it's not about that it's you noticing maybe some things that you don't want to emulate you're like okay like thought it was or a mentor that but out i've something outgrown inside of that. You that you're recognizing yeah. and you're like you're judging them but you're actually judging yourself yeah, either way, and I think it's happening, but like you can outgrow things and not want to necessarily use that wisdom from that aspect of your life anymore without being judgmental or feeling superior. You can just be like, okay, we're on different paths now, and yeah. that makes more That's sense. That's the challenge is when you start seeing things differently, you start seeing yourself differently, you start understanding why you do things, why you don't like things, why you do enjoy things what your triggers are, what your values are, what your boundaries are, and then you start yeah. to observe other people and how you interact, how you feel, how they influence the way you think and feel, but at the end of the day, it's your choice. Mm -hmm. But the more you do that, it gets challenging because then you have to accept that everyone's on their own journey. There is no right or wrong. You're no better or worse. They are the same. Like Everyone is where they are. So the real challenge becomes, can you love and respect other people and yourself for where they are? Mm -hmm. And each time you have this resistance pop up and I'm experiencing, it's usually something that's inside of me from something in my past that's triggering this emotion, right. whether it's someone cut you off, you know, like maybe they're having a bad day. You know, not everyone's out to get you. What is your perspective though? Is your perspective that everyone's out to get you, that the world's out to get you, that, you know, life happens to you and you know, like it's gotta be hard and all this and that Are you living addicted to stress. You know, because that's when that shit gets really complicated. Yeah. I think being addicted to stress, being addicted to drama, and being... Some people f need to be needed. You know what I mean? So I have had people in my life that would give me advice, and I used to take it, and I noticed that they... They feed off of being the person that gives others advice. But you look at their life and you look at what they're doing and you ask yourself, like, are they really in a position to be giving everyone advice about this kind of thing? And it 
it's eye-opening to notice patterns of other people. It really is. And to see it from a place of love and understanding and just hoping that that person feels fulfilled in what they're doing um, or that they like morph out of it during a different stage of their life. But um, you have to be wary of those people being in your circle as well because there are people who are just addicted to giving other people advice and not necessarily taking it themselves. You wonder why that is because I find, I just had a conversation with someone recently about the desire to be needed and we traced it back to a past of not having attention the way they saw it. Are you saying you personally or like somebody you were working with? Someone I was working with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, and this was all their realization, you know, like, because I was asking them questions, you know, like genuinely asking, and it came back to their their need to be needed or the need of attention was from a lack of attention in the past. Yeah. And that's that's how emotional baggage travels with us. And that what I just am still going through for what another week and a half is a detox from education because I had an addiction to knowledge to fill an insecurity of not knowing enough, not being yeah. good enough, not being capable enough. And I traced that back to being in high school and my lack of focus was yielding the negative results I was getting. And that led me to fear and to avoiding a situation that carried with me in another route. So it's, it's always something from our past. I mean, we know that our brain's an artifact of our past experiences, emotions, thoughts. And and what, what were we talking about earlier too? Like the whole, like trying to be molded into same, like, lane like the same path in life like and we were talking about this recently with athletes and education and like our experiences maybe you know like everyone is expected not everyone but like majority of people are expected by society to follow this traditional quote unquote traditional route of education and then when they don't do well they are failing the education system and when i heard gary v talk about this it, it made me so much more confident in my past and in my being because he was saying it's like it's not that you failed school it's a cool school system failed you because not every single human being is going to thrive in an eight-hour environment a day learning shit they're not in, in interested in when they have skills talents and passions that other people couldn't fathom yeah absolutely and that's that's something that you know you're experiencing right now with some students i experienced and i think in every walk of life imagine what it would be like if you could pick what you wanted to learn on base. Think about this. When we're in high school, we're expected to know what we want to do for the rest of our lives and to pick a four-year degree to go and learn. But you don't even know yourself. Like, yeah. I didn't really understand myself to my late 20s, and I'm still learning about myself in my early 30s. I'm like 31. Like, and still it's learning. insane. Still figuring it out. You know, I, I, and I, I've learned that my passions have transformed. You know, the last three years, it's not been all BMX like it was before. Well, when you step outside of the pattern, that's when that resistance starts to show up, whether it's created by you or other people, or it's just more difficult than the path that's already been cleared out. I think that's why they call it, you know, the road less less traveled. It literally means like you're creating your own trail. You're walking through underbrush and thorns and bushes and you're creating your own path. You don't know what it looks like ahead of you. And I think a lot of parents their their prime objective is to give their child a better life than what they had and when it's not something that they expected for their child that's when it becomes difficult or they see their child going down a path that might be like really really difficult some parents are very supportive and some parents are like yeah they they can do it i knew that they would be able to do it um but other parents are like this is just going to be harder for you. I don't understand why you're doing it this way. You know? So. But that's just a projection, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, all of it is. Even like, yeah, I know you can do it. Like, some parents are put instilled delusional belief into their children, which is another, like, completely wild thing to me. Like, not everybody is cut out to do everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's also why you need to have people around you giving you feedback. 
because you can be told that you're the best singer in your town, your parents, and this and that, but then you go on American Idol and you got millions of people voting against you. Yeah. And you're like, oh, you're not that good. Okay. Yeah. And I think that was something that you and I experienced was being able to travel the world at a young age and compete against other people and really size up where we are, not have our egos filled from the people in our corner. Yeah. But really go and literally each one of us could have get knocked out if something went wrong. Right. And like, I think that's a true test, but also I think it is important to have people kind of distill some delusional, you know, faith in you because that's you what need it a takes. Bit of that. Yeah. Especially if you're going to do something that other people haven't done. And that's, I think that a lot of people, it's not so black and white. I mean, there's, there's that gray area, mm. you know, you can't have delusional, you know, faith in someone that they're the best. And then you not go out and experiment and test yourself, but you also can't be pessimistic and fearful and, you know, um, trying to prevent all these bad things from happening or, you know, quote unquote, picking the best route for someone based on your perspective. Yeah. You need, you need a, a plethora, a, there is a word with a C that I can't think of right now. Um, but you need a wide variety of people in your circle that have different strengths and weaknesses on their own and also different ways of giving you advice. You need that like hype man that's just going to gas you up and tell you you are the best. Like you got this. You can do it. You need that person that's going to play devil's advocate a little bit to get you to think about things that you necessarily didn't think about. I don't about. like that word. And someone said, uh, I think it was at Kerwin's event, someone raised their hand. They're like, well, to play devil's advocate. And he was like, no, right there. I'm not going to answer that question because of that. I think self-awareness, having people call you out in your shit, I think is important. And I need to I need to go back and because I have the video. Yeah, calling you on your shit, but like, but like when I say tr- devil's advocate, I just mean like the other side of the coin, like just. But I find that you. that's become the 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 common the the majority now is people playing devil's advocate in their own mind, and that limits them. That limits other people. And you said it earlier, and then we kept going. But I think it was a current event there. He said that he's like, why the fuck would you say that? Like, well, just to, like, no, like, it's like, we're, we're focused on this. And that's like, um, people always saying, have a plan B. It's like, what, to distract you from going all in on plan A with your 100% effort? So I think it's important, like you said, to have people gassing you up. I think it's also important to have people calling you out. Like, yeah. hey, maybe singing isn't the best thing. Or, hey, you're five foot, maybe the NBA is not the best idea. Or, hey, you keep getting knocked the fuck out. You know, like maybe you should step, take a step back and re, like try some stuff. See if you're interested yeah. in some other things. I don't know. I still like the idea of a devil's advocate because I think if you're noticing in another person, like if you're aware enough to notice, like, well, they're definitely saying all this coming from a negative place. Even if they want it to come off as, even if they're saying it to you from a loving place, it's the, the belief or fear is coming from them from a negative place you can identify that and you can move on but if they're playing negative devil's advocate even though you don't like that word if they're feeding you information that you didn't necessarily think of before but it's coming from a place of knowledge or experience or whatever that part right there is key experience then that's important but devil's advocate from people that are just playing that role with no experience which is the majority that is what I think oh, is yeah, destructive. Yeah, that's harmful. You can't because that's and that's what I was just reading. You know, I was reading those interviews about Mac Miller, and they were talking about like successful creative people are the most insecure people because they're so in their work and they're right. judging it constantly and they're trying to be better. Any athlete that's gotten to any high level is the same way, but you learn how to how to bottle it up. You would like people would never I think that. Mac Miller is insecure, but he is. Yeah. He talks about it, but he harnesses it. Okay. When I'm on stage, people are like, how, how can I be so confident like you? And I'm like, you have no idea how nervous I am right now. But yeah, I don't think that's the that. truth for like every professional athlete, though. You know What's what I mean? that? Like, like insecurity deep down. No, but there's thoughts. 
Yeah, of course. Every but human like, being has those thoughts. Conor McGregor is like on a, a different. I don't think he's an insecure person at all. I don't. Why think do you Michael think he talks Jordan so much? Is an insecure person Why do you think they all? talk that so much though? So they focus on that. Yeah, of course. That's what you want to focus on, but it doesn't mean you're an insecure person because you want to focus on something. Yeah, I guess. But Michael Jordan said he also hates to lose. Yeah. Well, yeah, losing sucks. Wouldn't that be an insecurity? His drive to no, not lose. I think if lose. he was like ashamed of losing mm. or like it came from a weird place like that, but like you can just dislike losing. You're like, I don't like the way I feel when I lose. I guess the way to put it is like insecurity. insecure and like their their craft could always be better. So, well, yeah, I think anybody they're not, who's they're not content is well, like that's that. What, yeah. That's what I meant by that. And that's where that article was going. Like they said, like, Mac, that makes more sense. Mac Miller took. 10 attempts to film or to record one song and he ended up going with the first one because other people were like no this is fucking good like yeah and he kept trying to make it better um yeah i think everybody's on a certain level just always thinks that they can be better or do better i don't i would be really surprised if i met a person and they were just like i'm perfect i do exactly what i need to do every day I'm so emotionally intelligent. I'm so self-aware. I'm so just important to all the people in my life. I'm financially where I want to be. Like, I would be shocked to meet that person. I think when people start to say that they're woke or aware or at a certain level, that's when problems start well, it's like Michael that. Jordan said, no one, he doesn't call himself the goat. Yeah. People that are at a certain, like, they don't need to. Other people do it for them. Right. You know, and they, they don't, they don't like even think it's that. It's observable. Like, it's, yeah. you, can, you can experience it with that person. But I don't think that there's anybody out there that says those things and mean it. Like, I think you could meet. Oh, and to your Conor McGregor point, why do you think he had Tony Robbins at his last fight? Because there's parts of him that don't believe a hundred percent and what he's saying that's why he's saying it so we had tony robbins come out and say it to him i feel like and that's a little him. presumptuous you don't no, know he why said he it tony there robbins. was um there was an interview actually tony was talking about it he was talking about why connor had him come out to his house yeah connor mentioned it in like an instagram video too he actually he hired him because... to come out to his house to be there the fight that's why he was right there at the ring that's why after the fight he came out i thought he said it was just because he wanted to like eat, sleep, breathe. He wanted to get his head as right as possible. I didn't know he said anything because he was insecure. He didn't say people. like, oh, I'm insecure. He just said I lost sight and needed someone to help me bring it back in. Well, I think that had more to do with him like drinking and partying and being a crazy person and not seeing what's important about his career. But then if you were to go down, and I would love to get Kara's perspective on this or Jimmy, uh, you go down that route, why were they drinking? Why were they getting carried away with all that stuff, you know? Yeah. You know, insecurity doesn't have to be this evil thing that people think it is. Like, yeah. insecurity doesn't mean that that person doesn't think they're good enough. It's just those thoughts that linger. Everyone has them. But there's also a, a line. You know, you can be 99% confident and 1% of you has this like, oh, like, can I do this? And that's what drives you further to go harder to become the best you can yeah to get to that level some people have more of it i mean mj conor mcgregor those are you know ronda for a minute you know got to that level yeah and then she lost it you know like you know some people like but she, did she or did she find another path right so that's the thing like that's what i think is all is interesting we're always learning and if you're not learning you're not you're not living you know like when you shut your mind up that and that's part. why words are so powerful you know um i think we talked about this the other day like saying i can't just shuts your brain off yeah it doesn't allow it doesn't doesn't give it an opportunity to work it doesn't give it an opportunity to think or be creative entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs because they go how can i make this happen to the point of what we started this podcast on selling telling us telling myself that's not possible or that's not possible for you or that's not possible yeah. if you don't do it this way. Or you're if, stupid if you do that. Yeah. Like, I've had even people tell me that. Like, yeah. That's or you're irresponsible if you do that. Or, yeah. Yeah. Like, that, if you were to believe that, that's why you and I are where we are because we didn't believe it. So we kept trying. Yeah. That's where stubbornness, I think, is a virtue. <laughs> Because we're, right. we're unwilling to accept other people's reality or even our own reality for the reality that's in our mind. And I think that, 
actually, I, I believe that if more people were focused on what they truly wanted and believed was possible for themselves, if they you know, took all the distractions, this is why meditation is so important, and I'm becoming more and more obsessed with it again in a healthy manner this time. Um, but when you block out visually everything, you put earbuds in with just music, you, you block out your senses, and you're just there, either guided or just music in your own thoughts, like, what do you truly want to do? And yeah. do you believe that's possible? Not like, are you afraid of trying? But like, if you just thought, like, how, how would that make you feel? I think if more people did that, and then took the blindfold off, took the headphones out, and then saw where they were, and if it didn't match up, they aligned their actions to get to that vision. Yeah. There'd be a lot more, I think, joy in the world and less stress. Yeah. And I mean... I think people just have to keep in mind whether you're taking your advice, ignoring your own advice, or listening to other people. You have to know that your brain is just trying to protect you. That's what insecurities are. That's what doubts are. It's your brain trying to protect you from something that is both uncertain and unknown. If you don't know what the outcome is going to be, if it causes you to change if it causes something drastically different than what you're currently doing your reptile lizard brain is going no what the fuck no i don't like it it's uncomfortable it's scary i don't want to do it and that's where those come from and they look different for everybody they're not always wearing the same dress you know and they like all show up to the party at the same time when you're really trying to start make moves or when you're trying to focus on what it is that you really want. But I think if you understand that the world really does have limitless potential, like where there's a will, there's a way, you can probably get to a certain position no matter how hard you try. If you play to your strengths, if you're doing what you love to do, and if you have good intention doing it, I think that there's a way to get anywhere. I think our current society says that more than anything. Now, don't get me wrong. Like, Josh Perry is not going to play in the NBA. Like, that's not going to be a thing. But that wouldn't be you playing to your strengths. Does that no, make sense? and that would be lacking self-awareness. Right. But I think as long as you're sticking to things that you love and things that you know that you're good at, I think you can do whatever it is that you want to do. Yeah. Where we are today in today's society is man-made stress, man-made fear, man-made disbelief. And it comes from our caveman monkey brains that's been conditioned us to today, but we don't have the problems we had back then. And that meant survival. Yeah. The fears, the doubts, the limiting beliefs that we deal with today are hardwired for survival, but they're not necessary because it's all man made up for the most part. Don't get me wrong. You go to the top of a tall building and you lean over, you're going to get a little afraid when you look at the ground, but that's survival. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's what you're, you're a big, you've never experienced falling off a building before. You don't know, like, but no, yeah. But but, like, you know that it's bad because I've fallen off things, you know, that's Mm -hmm. past experiences, but we go into these other things of the unknown and the challenge is, and this is what they talk about in Buddha's brain, the book, Buddha's brain, pleasure is not powerful enough because Pleasure doesn't mean survival like right. fear does. Right. Fear protects us from the saber tooth tiger back in the day. Yeah. But fear protects us from our boss doesn't necessarily mean survival. Right. And pleasure doesn't mean survival. So it's that's why you have to do these things like meditation, you know, reading, learning, having conversations, getting it out, taking the action that's congruent to what you say you want in your life. You have to be so consistent with it because that motivation, what people seek, is energy and momentum. It's not motivation. It's it's momentum. It's consistency. Mm-hmm. And if you're not doing something consistently, it's so easy for your caveman brain to get back into that survival mode and protect you from the quote-unquote unknown. Even if Tony Robbins is like, hey, you jump over this river, I'll give you a million dollars. You're going to analyze it. You're going to think, oh, shit, can I make it? It'll be a yeah. foot long, and you'll still think, can I make that? Yeah. That's, that's your uh, caveman monkey brain. Yeah, it is your caveman monkey brain. And, I mean, it's a doozy. I, we're making light of it, and we're saying certain things, and we're talking about the importance of filtering out opinions of others and things like that. But it's definitely 
easier said than done. But we're know? doing the work. Yeah. And of that's course. why we're kind of talking about it so nonchalantly. And it's not easy. It's not always fun, but mm-hmm. it's so worth it. Yeah. But I'm so passionate and fired up about it that I talk about it all the time is because I've seen what it's done for me in such a short amount of time for me becoming aware, you know, consciousness has become aware, like creating awareness. I've seen what it's done for me in the last four years of my life. Imagine what it would have done at the beginning of my BMX career. Yeah. You know, imagine what it would have changed. And I don't, I don't regret, I don't wish anything changed, but I want other people to have the tools that I have now when they're starting their journey, whether they're 17 or 45, they're starting a new change in their life or to become aware, especially the younger generation because neuroplasticity runs out when you start getting into your 20s. Your prefrontal cortex fully develops. You know, it's so much more difficult to unwire and rewire new thought patterns. And that's a hard fact. That's why old dogs can't learn new tricks phrase is really common with the older generation or that mentality right it's because those you know neurons that have fired and wired together for so many years of fear and anxiety and stress and disbelief and negative self-talk are so much more tightly wound together Mm -hmm. but a 16 year old i remember when i was 13 i could be told whatever i go do it yeah now i'm like uh let me go back through 31 years of experience and quickly, you know, figure out if that's a good choice or not. I think a big part of that too is I heard a lot of things when I was younger that I hear now and they hit differently. So I feel like you can tell a teenager some shit that you hear now that you're like, God, that makes so much sense. Like, but you're like shaking a 16 year old until they're you're blue in the face and you're telling them the same thing, but it doesn't hit the same. Like, so I think it's important to share and I think it's important to do that. But even certain affirmations and things like that, that I had when I was younger, I say them again now and it's got a different tone to it. It has a different meaning to it. Like it hits deeper than it used to. So I think that being comfortable with change and growth is important in an individual, but also being able to re-explore maybe old ideas that you have dismissed before because they might work for you now. So you can't try something when you're 18 and then when you're 25 go, nah, I, you know, I never liked school. It didn't work for me because you might find that going back to school and getting a degree is going to be the most fulfilling and uplifting things that you've ever done with your life. You know what I mean? So I just, Things just, they hit differently when you get older as well. Because I used to do a lot of like that typical, you know, like hipster college student, like exploration and existentialism. And, you know, there was a lot of weed and there was a lot of talk about aliens and your mind and things like that. And now it, it means something so much more to me than it did then. Does that make sense? Yeah. You've experienced more. You've yeah made more connections you've learned more you've grown like your consciousness has gotten to a different level like of course it makes sense Mm -hmm. but it could also go in the opposite direction that's why hopes and dreams become shattered as we get older if we don't have the right perspective or if we don't become aware of certain things so well i think the moral of the my point was like don't be afraid to circle back to like old advice old old things and just like re-explore what that means to you because someone could have given you some really great advice 10 years ago, but now it just doesn't make any goddamn sense. And you've, now you're realizing, man, I still take that advice and I still do that. And I probably shouldn't, it doesn't work for my life anymore. So it's okay to like dismiss old lessons. You don't have to carry them with you forever. I think that's why it's very important to seek support from other people in these areas like you and I have um, recently hired on a coach to help us with these things. Yeah. I definitely don't think I'd be where I am in such a recent amount of time had it not made, been for that decision to invest in working with Kara. I've been on this path for years and just some of the simple exercise she's given me, I've learned... 31 years worth of things, you know, like in a journaling session for 20 minutes, an hour, whatever it was. And then 
just having a soundboard and someone that understands language mm-hmm. from an outside perspective to call you out in your shit. I think it's huge. There's nothing crazier than talking something through with someone and actually having an impactful self-realization. And I think that those people are important. If you have friends in your life that are down for those deep conversations with you, if you can afford a coach, if you can get a counselor or a therapist or somebody to talk to, self-realizations are so profound and as cliche as it might be they just they rock you like I had one last night just having a conversation with Kara and it literally took just the direction of the conversation and like one thing that she said and I went oh (laughs) and it was so interesting to me and I was like man I've been like saying weird shit like this forever but now here we are so I think that just those conversations, those deep conversations are so important for self-realization and for figuring out your own motivations for doing things. Sometimes you don't need someone to give you advice. You just need someone to talk about nonsense with you until you can circle back around to something profound. 